So let's look at 17 and 18. Number 17 says that the cosine of theta is 0.78. Okay, so cosine is positive. We've got to ask ourselves, where is cosine positive? Cosine is the x-coordinate. So my cosine is positive. My x-coordinates are positive in this quadrant and this quadrant here. And so if theta, um, we'll just say, let's say that theta was here in this quadrant to start. Opposite of theta means move up and down. So if I'm up, I move down. If I'm down, I move up. And when I do that, cosine still stays in the positive quadrant. So it still stays positive 0.78. Pi minus theta means I move side to side. So if I'm here, I'm going to move to this quadrant. And if I'm here, I move over here. Well, when I move here, I become negative. And when I move here, I become negative. So negative 0.78. Pi plus theta means to move on the diagonal. Well, when I move diagonally this way or diagonally this way, I end up in these two quadrants where cosine is negative. All right, so for number 18, it's a similar type question. They're telling me that the tangent of theta is 0.78, and tangent is positive in this quadrant and this quadrant. So tangent of opposite of theta, if I move up and down, I end up in these two quadrants, which are both negative, so I'd get negative 0.78. Then for part b, pi minus theta means move side to side, so I move to this quadrant and I move to this quadrant. So now that I'm in these two quadrants, again, tangent is negative. And then for the last one, I move diagonal. And I end up staying in these same two quadrants where the tangent is positive. All right, in number 19, I'm asked to go to my unit circle. So if I was you, I would get my actual unit circle out. And if you were to go to your actual unit circle, since pi over 4 is right here, this is where your pi over 4 is going to be negative pi over 4 would be right here. And it's asking for the cosine, which is the x-coordinate. And the x-coordinate here is the square root of 2 over 2. So the answer is the square root of 2 over 2. Now, in number 20, again, I would just go to my unit circle and you can have your actual unit circle that you've used throughout trig sitting right next to you during the exam. I know that 5 pi over 6 is right here. So negative 5 pi over 6 would be right here. And sine is the y coordinate. And the y coordinate right here is negative 1 half. All right, so um, 21 and 22 are, um, they give you an equation for what y equals, and then they ask you to substitute in pi over 6. So I'm going to let pi over 6 go right in there for x. So I end up with 4 times the cosine. When I take 3 times pi over 6, 3 times pi over 6, I get 3 pi over 6 which is of course pi over two. So I get pi over two because this would then be pi over two. So this is kind of what I did in um, like kind of work off to the side, minus pi over two minus one. So I end up with y equals four times the cosine. Well, pi over two minus pi over two is simply zero minus one. 
When you take the cosine of zero, look at your unit circle, and zero is right here. And the cosine, so the ordered pair here is one, zero. Cosine is the x coordinate. So we get y equals four times the cosine of zero is one minus one. So I end up with three as my answer. Now in number 22, it looks like it's the same problem, but now I want the sine. Once again, I put the pi over six right there. And of course, three times pi over six is three pi over six, which is pi over two. So y equals four times the sine of pi over two minus pi over two minus one. So y equals four times the sine of zero minus one. Well, the sine of zero, remember, sine is the y coordinate right here at zero. The ordered pair is one, zero. So this is the sine, I'm sorry, didn't have it on the screen. This is the sine. So we end up with four times zero minus one. So y equals negative one. All right, 23 and 24 are where you're given an equation and you're asked to find the phase shift and the period. The phase shift is the um, change in x. And remember, it lies in the equation. So in the equation, it's minus pi over eight. So the actual, actual phase shift is pi over eight. The period is always found by taking two pi divided by the b value. Now, if you remember, this is a, this is b, this is c, and this is d, which means it's just plus zero. So my, um, period is two pi divided by the b value, which is four pi, which just gives me one half. All right, let's look at number 24. Again, I have a, b, c, and d. The phase shift, I look right here, says plus pi over six, but since it lies in the equation, it's minus pi over six. And the period is always two pi divided by b. So it's two pi divided by four, which is pi over two. All right, so for number 25, um, we're asked to find the exact value for the cosine of 19 pi over six. Again, my recommendation, have your unit circle sitting right next to you. If you were to look at your unit circle, um, what I do is I take 19 divided by six, and I know that that's three and one sixth pi. So three pi is on this side. Remember this is zero, one pi, this is two pi. And we said this would be three pi, four pi, five pi, six pi, seven pi, eight pi, all my odd multiples of pi are here. So this is three pi, and then one sixth would be right here. And at this ordered pair, which is on your unit circle says so seven pi over six, the ordered pair is negative square root of three over two, negative one half. And cosine is the x coordinate, so it's negative square root of three over two. All right, let's go to number 26, negative five pi over four. Again, you don't have to draw this. I'm just doing this this way rather than pulling out my unit circle. Five pi over four. Well, I'm sorry, negative five pi over four. I know that five pi over four is right here which means negative five pi over four is up here. Because remember, opposite is above and below. So this is where negative five pi over four is. 
And the ordered pair here is negative square root of 2 over 2, positive square root of 2 over 2. Sine is the y coordinate, and so my answer is the square root of 2 over 2. Right, number 27 says that we have triangle ABC, so I'll label that ABC. Angle A is 40. Side A is 7. Remember, side A is across from angle A. And side B is 9, which means it's across from angle B. We're asked to find the measure of angle B. So we have this side and angle, and we need this angle, and we have this side. This is where we can use law of sines. Sine of 40 degrees divided by the side across from it equals sine of B, which we don't know, divided by the side across from it. I decided to use do law of sines rather than law of cosines for the exam just because I figured it's easier to remember than the law of cosines. And then you simply cross multiply. 9 times the sine of 40 degrees equals 7 times the sine of b. We're solving for b, divide both sides by 7, and we get that the sine of b equals, I don't know, let's look at my calculator and see. All right, first of all, I've got to make sure that my calculator is in degrees, so I've got to change my mode to degrees. And then I can do 9 times the sine of 40 divided by 7. And then to find this angle, remember to find an angle, you have to do an inverse. So B equals, I'm going to take the inverse sine of this decimal. Inverse sine 0.826441212125, and I get that it's 55.735. But the question said round to the nearest degree, so we would say that B is 56 degrees. Okay. Let's go on to number 28. All right, so for 28, we have triangle ABC. We're told that angle A is 48 and angle B is 54. Side A is 9. Side B is the one we're looking for. So again, I'm going to use law of sines. So sine of the angle 48 divided by the side across from it equals the sine of 54 divided by the side across from it. Then I can cross multiply B times the sine of 48 degrees equals 9 times the sine of 54 degrees. Since I'm solving for B, I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 48. And B equals, let's see, 9 times the sine of 54 divided by the sine of 48. Um, and it said to the nearest tenths place. So we get B equals 